trigger warning. This podcast contains descriptions of various abusive situations. Listener discretion is advised. You are listening to the Preacher Boys Podcast, a podcast shedding light on decades of mental, physical, and sexual abuse within the independent fundamental Baptist movement. The testimonies shared on this podcast are told from the personal experience and perspective of the survivors. Not all legal outcomes are known or final. Any suspect is presumed innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. To find more information about the Preacher Boys podcast and upcoming documentary, visit PreacherBoysDoc.com or connect on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter with the handle at PreacherBoysDoc. Now, here is your host, Eric Skwarzynski. Hey guys, really quick setup here. My name is Eric, obviously from the Preacher Boys podcast. Jack Scopp has slithered his way back into the news cycle. Uh, if you're not familiar with Jack Scopp, he was the pastor for a while of First Baptist Church of Hammond. He was the chancellor of Hiles Anderson College, uh, one of the biggest churches in fundamentalism. And he was arrested back around 2013 for taking a 17-year-old girl from the church across state lines in order to have sex with her. Uh, He used his power to manipulate her. He told her that it was God's will for them to be together. And anyway, when it was discovered, he was arrested and he was sentenced to prison. Now, as with most of these cases, his sentence was less than deserving. Uh, His sentence was from 2013 through uh, 2023. So he was originally scheduled to be released in about, uh, yeah, three years. Um, But he just made the news. Chicago Tribune is reporting that he requested a compassionate release. Um, And so, and oh, my my mistake, I'm looking at the article, 16-year-old girl across state lines. But he wants a compassionate release because of the COVID-19 pandemic. He's using that as his reason. Um, And so he's basically capitalizing on the COVID-19 pandemic in order to manipulate the the judge that's reviewing his case. Um, He had initially... um, tried to petition for an early release just through normal methods and was denied. And so this seems to be the next route that he's taking. Um, He says he's been a model prisoner. Uh, He wrote and said, quote, um, he accepted full responsibility and to avoid a lengthy trial period, which he felt would be detrimental um, and to prevent any other staff personnel from being indicted. He went for a pre-indictment plea. Um, And then he says, this is where you know that Jack Scott doesn't feel guilt over what he did. Because even in this request, he's still trying to alleviate the gravity of what he did. Uh, This is what he wrote. Although there were extenuating circumstances and I did not know I was violating the law, the fact is I did violate the letter of the law and I did plead guilty. I realized the seriousness of the crime and accepted uh, responsibility for it. Yeah, you got caught. (laughs) That That was why you accepted responsibility. You got caught. Um, And so there's that. But uh, what I love most about this article, so he was denied May 6th, uh, June 1st he filed for this. So obviously, this, this is very obvious what he's doing. Um, but I love um, I, I love um, Joy Ryder's response. So the Chicago Tribune reached out to Joy Ryder. Joy Ryder is a survivor herself of abuse within First Baptist Church of Hammond, not at the hands of Jack Scott, but at the uh, hands of Jack Hiles' uh, son, David. And she uh, she wrote here, I'm sure the others in this story, his victims and church people, would love to be granted an early compassionate release from their pain and suffering because of his actions. His incarceration is a consequence of his actions, and he should serve his full sentence. That's all. I mean, that's, and and she's done this before. When, When commenting on these cases before, she nails it in one sentence. Like, that is the reason that a guy like Jack's cop should not be released. When you're involved in a crime like this, where you're manipulating your position to abuse someone in your church, no matter how much time you serve, you're going to be free from it a lot sooner than your victim. Your victim is going to carry around what you did for the rest of their life. And so he should be, Jack Scott should be getting down on his hands and knees and thanking whoever decided to give him a sentence that would end in 2023. This is... It's just ridiculous. So he served 67% of his sentence. He is eligible for the First Step Act signed by Donald Trump to reduce the size of the federal prison population while also creating mechanisms to maintain public safety. Uh, he says he's been a model prisoner, has an excellent work record. Again, this doesn't qualify you to be released. A crime like this, manipulating the position that he did, the, the levels to which he went to pursue his victim, 
is so much more than just, oh, I, I made an accident. I didn't understand the letter of the law. So um, I'm, I'm really concerned that, you know, this could be something that does happen. I'm concerned that this may set a, you know, Indiana historically has, um, you know, um, and I'm not sure about Chicago, but I know Indiana specifically has looked over a lot of crimes coming out of First Baptist of Hammond. And so I'm really, really hoping that the judge reviewing this case is someone that's going to understand the gravity of what he did and is going to deny this request. Um, it's, it's crazy to me that, you know, it's crazy to me that he even thinks that this is something that's possible. But as I've said before, <laughs> crazier things have happened within the IFB, so I wouldn't be surprised to see um, where this ends up going. Um, I do have one quick update. So someone did comment, I showed this article on the Preacher Boys Facebook page. Um, so the judge assigned to Scott's case is Judge Teresa Lazar Springman. The address is 5400 Federal Plaza, Suite 4300, Hammond, Indiana, 46320. That's 5400 Federal Plaza, Suite 4300, Hammond, Indiana, 46320. If you want to write, if you want to write in and just let the governing officials know, you know, how you feel about this guy. If you have a story of abuse that's similar to this, if you have seen, you know, the things that I talk about on the show all the time, if you've seen that stuff happen and take place and you understand the level at which Scott manipulated his church, the amount of cover-up and deceit that was going on, it's a clear answer that this is not someone that needs to be released back sooner rather than later. Um, and so anyway, I just wanted to hop on really quick. I'm sorry again that this is kind of a rushed audio and video setup, but it, this is a huge story. Um, I really appreciate the Chicago Tribune taking the time to publish this story. And um, I'm really going to be watching this with, you know, all of my attention to see what happens. Um, I would hate to see this. I mean, just on the sake of the survivor of his abuse, I would hate to see him be released early. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments on this, if you think he should be released, if you think he shouldn't be released, just drop a comment in this video. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, just head over to Facebook, find this video. It just drop it on the wall wherever you want to go. Um, also, the Preacher Boys official discussion group is a great place to do that. So wherever you want to do it, let's keep the conversation going. Let's make sure that people are aware of the depths of the depravity of guys like Jack Scott who abuse their pulpits every single Sunday. And uh, together, let's see if we can prevent stuff like this from happening ever again. So thank you so much for listening or watching to the Preacher Boys podcast wherever you're catching this video. Um, it was a great thing to be able to talk to you guys. I appreciate everyone who supports the show, every one of you that's being vocal for survivors, and um, I'll keep you guys updated if I hear anything further about this case. Alrighty, thank you. Thank you for listening to the Preacher Boys podcast. If you appreciated the content on the show, please leave a review on iTunes and don't forget to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter with the handle at Preacher Boys Doc. Additional information can always be found on PreacherBoysDoc.com.